Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video, so we may have gotten some kind of confirmation of Bitmain creating an ASIC for Alephium, right? So it's not official confirmation. We're gonna talk about what we found and it's pretty damning, right? So we kind of knew it was inevitable, but this is kind of just reiterating that, right? So we'll talk about what we found. We're gonna talk about what to expect, right? So we kind of saw a similar thing with Casper last year. We'll talk about the comparisons and what to consider, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. Let's get to this thing. So today, Alephium had crazy, crazy price action, right? They hit a new all-time high. And they are continuing to go up, which was kind of weird because early this morning, been a lot of man manipulation going on in the market, but specifically things were kind of downish. Yeah, Alephium was continuing up, right? So I kind of started digging a bit like, oh, there's something going on. Did I miss something? What was going on? Because overall they've been going up. But it was just kind of interesting, right? So I remember about a week ago, sh shout out to Nick Damani from Discover Crypto. He had mentioned something about crypto banter mentioning them. There was a clip where he mentioned it potentially being on his like 100X list, which he is a shill. He's a big shiller in that department, but he does have a lot of reach, right? He has nearly a million YouTube followers and it's not just him talking about, right? If you do searches on YouTube, there are a lot of people starting to talk about it, even outside of the mining circles, right? So it is starting to get some traction. Um, Discover Crypto has also mentioned it, mainly probably because of Nick Demondi, but pretty interesting stuff there. So I thought maybe it was kind of had something to do with that, but as we saw on their Twitter account, this is most likely the culprit, right? So, new hackathon partner. Bitmain made a donation to their hackathon. Why do you think that is? Think it's out of the goodness of their heart? Or it's because they're kind of trying to put it out there that, hey, we are considering or not considering, but we are at least in the early stages of creating an ASIC for it, right? So again, it's speculation, but I highly doubt that they just did it to support GPU and FPGA miners. <laughs> there is a reason they did this. Um, part of the other reason is most likely also just let it be known to the other manufacturers that, hey, we know you guys are probably making something and be aware that we are too, right? Because we know that the ASIC game, especially even just outside of like purchasing and stuff, the ASIC game in the background, the manufacturers, is ruthless too, bros. They're all backstabbing each other. They're all spying on each other. They're trying to see what each other's up to to so try to knock each other out, right? So Bitmain did something similar just a few months ago with like Alio, right? We got word of like a couple weeks before that there was a ASICs coming out for Alio from smaller manufacturers. There were FPGAs that were going to be on Alio, like Superscalar. They had been talking about a lot. That's probably a big reason why Bitmain said, if you guys were creating one too, and they put that out there and same thing, they started participating with them and they did officially announce it, right? So kind of the same situations going on here. What we have seen with Bitmain and these all coin ASICs that they do make, they do support them. They do like go on Twitter spaces with them. They do things in the background with them and they do help them out, right? Even farther out, which was kind of interesting to me, like good examples of like Handshake, for example, even a year later, they are still doing spaces with them. They're still doing like advertising with them. It's pretty interesting, right? But so again, it's not officially announced, but I mean, let's put two and two together, right? So we kind of know what's going on there. So pretty interesting. Now let's see what's going to happen, right? Are we gonna have a similar situation like we had last year where freaking Ice River or one of these other manufacturers or who's to say another manufacturer pops up out of nowhere also and beats everybody else to the punch, right? That is also possible because to me, most likely, the reason they did this is most likely because they got wind that other people are in the early stages or they're developing or they're planning to create that ASIC, right? So this is kind of just to put them on notice. Wouldn't be surprised to see if this was the big reason that these restocks haven't really been happening too well, specifically with like the KS1, KS2. I know people have been saying that there's chip shortages, which is kind of weird because that's not affecting any other sectors and it's not affecting other manufacturers, right? We still see the Bitmain units. We just now saw the IB Link units. Gold Shell's gonna announce their units here pretty soon. So, to me, it's all possible that they're shifting production to something else, right? Again, who knows? Not official, but 
Potentially, right? So we'll see if they jump on, Ivy Link jumps on, Gold Shell jumps on a year later because they like to fumble the bag. <laughs> Who knows? Right? But expect it to be a very similar situation to the Caspa, right? We all saw what happened. We saw the timeline. This is another kind of funny thing is that the timeline is lining up almost exactly, right? It was March of last year. When we got wind of all these FPGAs for Caspa, we saw the Molt Miner, we saw the Osprey, we saw the K10, the first iteration, that was our debut with it on the public side, right? It had been around on the private side, but that was the debut for it on the public side for us to be able to purchase it. So that happened in March, and then in April is when we heard about Ice River potentially coming out with theirs. It was like late April when Panda got his which that was probably one of the most memorable live streams last year. I remember being glued to that live stream, <laughs> watching it like in disbelief, essentially, just because it was so outrageous. But um, everything's kind of lining up there, right? So again, does this mean that we're going to have an ASIC next month? No, it just means that they're creating one. Potentially can follow the same timeline, right? It could potentially, we can start seeing pre-orders, so we know Bitman has done pre-orders like six, eight months ahead of time at times, right? So who's to say we don't see pre-orders sometime in like late spring for delivery in late summer? Maybe before then, maybe Ice River beats them to the punch. At this point, it's going to be a game of who announces the pre-orders first, right? Because at this point, the release doesn't even matter too much. It's the pre-orders and who kind of does come to market, right? Who releases that price point first? Who beats them? Because again, the more competition there is here, the better it is for us, right? Because we saw last year what happened with Bitmain and they fumbled big time. They released that KS3 at 50K. Ice River beat them to the punch. They released these smaller variations, which was huge, right? It helped a lot of things. Not just for us on the mining aspect, but that was a big concern with like Caspa, right? If these big units come out, the whole network could be in control by just like a couple thousand units, right? But the fact that like the KS0 came out, they sold thousands upon thousands, same with the KS1, KS2, it helped like decentralize and get more units out there, right? Instead of it being one farm buying the thousand lot shipment and controlling the network, right? So that was a big worry and concern on top of like the sell pressure, all those things. But we all saw that panned out. Even though initially I was a big, I was like, no way this thing is real, no way that the price point is real because it just didn't make any sense, right? It would make more sense for them to s keep this unit in mind on it. Because at the time, like when it was first revealed, it was like literally days it would ROI, right? So it would make more sense for them to just create a huge batch, then hang on to it, then mine on it. And we're going to see it because we'll see a hash rate explosion, then sit on them for a month, stack all that, and then sell them. But that's why in my head, I was like, there's no way that they're going to release at that price point, that they're going to be real. But that was definitely not a factor, right? So... Don't factor that in if that's a consideration. Um, right now, Alephium has had a lot of price appreciation. It probably could support it now. Don't be surprised to see this continue up. This is probably a big reason why it pumped today. People are coming to the realization that they're coming, right? So don't be surprised also to see the hash rate just continue to go up. People are going to come to the realization like, man, I didn't mind anything. They're going to throw all their GPUs on there, all their FPGAs on there. And they're gonna try to get every last bit they can because once this thing does go ASIC, it's not gonna be something where it's gonna be able to coincide with GPUs and FPGAs. It's gonna be very similar to Caspa because it's an algorithm that's made for it, right? It's gonna blow everything out of the water, okay? It's none of those things are gonna be profitable for a lithium anymore, right? Because if we saw with like the super scaler, when the Caspa ASIC came out, so we can do an easy comparison just to get a ballpark. This is just easy math, this is not exact guesstimate or anything so with casper for example 30 giga hash is what the superscalar did the big main unit or the big boy that came out ended up being what nine tera hash right so if we were to kind of compare it apples to apples it's about a 300x from where this is at right so if we do the same guesstimation for alephium because it's kind of a similar algo kind of a similar setup if we were to times this by the 300 that would give us about 13 and a half terahash. Okay, so if we do just a quick calculation, we throw this in here, we guesstimate that it's 13,500 gigahash, which is 13 and 5, 13.5 terahash at 3,200 watts. <laughs> the fiat value would be over $6,000, right? 1,800 alpha day, which again, is not gonna be realistic. It'll be for those first few people who get it in hand, 
Shout out to RPM. <laughs> this is gonna happen again. We're gonna see the same repeat. So those few people who are able to get in those initial batches will make an extreme amount of money, right? It's gonna dwindle down drastically as more units come out, especially as the first big batch comes out, especially if these big boy units come out. But expect it to be a similar thing, depending on who comes out first, right? If Bitmain comes out swinging with a 13 terahash unit right off the bat, then expect it to be a little bit different. But most likely, Vice River Smart, they were probably already on it, and that's why Bitmain probably got wind of it. The best place for them to do it, like how they did, would roll out with these smaller units, right? Release the zero version for X amount of money, a one and two, and let that gradually build and then go with the bigger units. Right, we'll see if they beat Bitmain to the punch this time, or maybe freaking IB Link comes out from under them, or a whole nother manufacturer, right? Kinda who knows, but we kinda saw the playbook, right? So at this point, it will be slightly different though from last time, because last time, a lot of people did not, and myself included, I was 100% convinced this is BS, they are a fake company, there's no way, it ended up happening. So all the DJs, shout out to all you guys, great and good. All you guys who got in on that initial batch when risk was extremely high, right? We all say, oh, we saw, we all had the same opportunities to order the KS0 Pro, right? That pre-order window was open for quite a bit. We all had that opportunity. It was extreme risk. They jumped in and it wasn't luck for them. They took that leap of faith. They went in, they risked it for the biscuit and they freaking got in there, right? So it's up to you to decide if it's gonna be worth it to do the same thing here. Just the key thing is, is just, again, be ahead of the game, right? This is a big part of what we do here. We try to talk about these things. We try to strategize and try to be ready for it, right? So if this is something that is going to be on your radar, you're going to want to think about those things because it's not like it's going to be similar to last time. And this time it might be even more competitive, right? Because at this point we know they are real. We know that when Ice River does announce these things, it's going to sell out like that, okay? So have that USDC, USDT ready, have price points in mind, right? Think of what your max is, think about it, right? Because again, realistically though, bros, this thing might be through the roof as far as price goes, because especially if it's like late summer, early fall, when this thing actually does come out, think of where we are gonna be in the timeline, right? If the price action, the bullish price already started, this thing could be an astronomical price. If freaking Bitmain try to release that KS3 in the depths of the freaking bear market at 50K, what do you think they're gonna do here? Okay, and there were people who unfortunately did buy it at that 50K, which sucked, right? It's just, again, there's extreme risk. It's pretty much who comes first, right? Is it gonna be Ice River again? Will Bitmain beat them to the punch this time? Or will it be another manufacturer? Again, the key thing we saw those first batches. What manufacturer is gonna be first though? Who knows, right? Is IB Link developing one? Is Gold Shell finally gonna be smart? Who knows, right? A lot of factors, a lot of risks, especially now because there's gonna be a lot more people, okay? At this time also, mining YouTube and mining just in general was not very hot, okay? A lot of people were still kinda of iffy about everything in general. Things are very different. There's a lot more awareness with mining. Caspa Mining specifically did onboard a lot of people. Okay, a lot of people are now in, a lot of like newbie miners are in because of Caspa, specifically the KS0, right? It did bring a lot of people in. So a lot more people are interested. A lot more people are going to be eyeing this thing. So again, if you are thinking about it, Start preparing, start having whatever you need to do, start having price points in mind though, right? Also don't phone one to this thing and it comes out at freaking 15K for the zero, right? Let's, you, it has to make sense also, right? So understand it, understand there will be a risk because even if you do pre-order it, let's say another manufacturer comes out first, it's gonna drastically change things, right? And we saw, even with ice rivers, right? Those initial batches, right? Like a month later, some of them dropped in freaking half, like just like that, right? Luckily they did kind of help those early supporters though. They did offer them coupons like, hey, it was a drastic price cut. We gave you these coupons to kind of buy another one to continue the train versus Bitmain left those poor people who freaking bought it at 50K in the dust, right? So there is gonna be a lot of risk. There is gonna be a lot of competition. There is gonna be a ton of hype because man, this thing, regardless of what it is, right? We're just guesstimating that it's gonna be this amount. Regardless of what it is, we know it's gonna be an insane amount. We know it's not gonna be sustainable. We know it's gonna continue to drop. We kind of have 
ballpark there. The difference here, though, we're not going to have that crazy emissions reduction, right? But we are going to have the proof of less work to factor in. This is something I'm sure Bitmain will be working with them to kind of get an idea of how they're going to do things, what to expect, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but just get ready, bros. It's going to be here. So it's up to you to strategize. Like, what do you want to do? Are you going to try to mine that last bit? Are you going to try to throw all your GPUs and FPGAs on there? Or are you going to go for these other coins, depending on where they yield? Because you know freaking the hash rate is going to go through the roof right now. People are going to go crazy. Number one, the price action. Number two, the fact that they know the clock is ticking for how much longer they can mine this thing, right? So it's going to be up to you what your play is going to be. Are you going to try to get everything you can? Or are you going to look for yield, right? It's probably going to be a good opportunity to, to be looking for that, especially with certain coins who kind of have other priorities as well, like with Radiant, for example, having their halving in like two months, right? So there's a lot of, lot of things going on, a lot of things to think about, a lot of things to consider, but you need to stay ahead of the game. So I'm trying to show my Twitter, but like at Mining Stacker or whoever you want to follow, make sure you're following Bitmain, follow Ice River, follow IB Link, follow all these accounts. So if you are wanting to be on it, because again, it's going to get announced and it's going to be gone like that. So you have to be on it. Whoever you want to follow, set your alerts, set your whatever. Again, I don't think it's going to happen anytime within the next few weeks or anything like that. It's going to probably happen in the next few months. But when it happens, it's going to happen like that, right? It's just we're going to hear about it and it's going to happen, right? Again, when you was pretty much inevitable, but it's just kind of like throwing reality in there for sure, right? So we'll see what ends up happening. Let me know what you guys are doing. Are you guys excited? Is this something that's on your radar? Or are you gonna throw the F you to Bitmain and you're not gonna go through it again? Or are you gonna try to be like great or good and <laughs> get in early and make that crazy money? Like, understand though, there's a lot of risk though, right? So we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know if delays happen. We don't know if another manufacturer comes in and beats everybody out just like Ice River did to Bitmain. Like so many things to consider guys, so many things to factor in. Am I looking at it? Yes, right? If the price makes sense, but again, the price is probably gonna be stupid, stupid, stupid. It's not gonna be like what it was last time. The reason Ice River priced it, because it, it's insane when you really think about it that it sold out at like that 30K for the KS2 on pure speculation, right? And now that we know that Ice River is real, it's just the hype's gonna be insane for this thing, right? So just be aware of that, keep that in mind, understand what's going on. But uh, let me know in the comments, guys, again, if you guys are thinking about it or do you think Bitmain just donated money out of the generosity of their heart? <laughs> let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think this is valid? Do you guys think this is essentially confirming it? And what you guys going to do about it, right? Let me know in the comments, guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching, and I am out.